amidst the dizzying hustle and bustle of life, words like these refresh our weary spirits. But all too often, they are just that, mere words. And sometimes, for them to be translated into deeds takes nothing short of an extraordinary soul to see it through. The ones who are able, be they stranger or soulmate, to be the silver lining behind that dark cloud. In 1995, the then Television Corporation of Singapore set out to find people whose kindness and selflessness gave hope to others and to tell their story. An inspirational documentary was born and overnight, these ordinary folks became known as the Extraordinary People. These elusive few showed that even as the red race beckons for Singapore, there is always an opportunity to show off the good in all of us. But six years since this award-winning documentary, what has become of these extraordinary people? Have they lost their ideals? How have their lives changed? These questions became the sole objective behind the return of the extraordinary people in changing lives. The Extraordinary uh, People, it's a series that a lot has touched a lot of people. Lah. So we thought that since uh, five, six years has passed, and uh, it's appropriate lah, at this point in time to catch up with some of these people who, you know, five years ago have touched our hearts. Beyond novel subject matter, Extraordinary People was also different in the way it presented the stories of the Good Samaritans of Singapore. I think the first season and second season of uh, Extraordinary People, the technique that was employed uh, basically was for the people to speak for themselves. For a subject of this matter, it's sometimes very, very difficult, you know, for another person to sort of like uh, tell the story for the people. So the decision then was for the people to tell the story themselves. That's why there was no actually commentary at all. This time around, the producers decided on using commentary for changing lives because in some ways it's an update on the people featured in Extraordinary People. Just when I was wondering... Of course, Changing Lives has a tough act to follow. Extraordinary People was one of the highest rated programs of its time and was even awarded a letter of commendation from Brigadier General George Yeo, the then Minister for Information and the Arts. When I was told that I was going to be doing it, I was quite pleased, but also there was a sense of uh, a case of trying to fill up the shoes of the past producers who did Extraordinary People because they made such an impact. They basically changed, I think, the emotional level of documentaries in Singapore um, and they brought about something that Singaporeans could really relate to, could aspire to. And so to revisit them again, it was somewhat of a challenge for all of us. Changing Lives, a revisitation of those featured in the previous Extraordinary People series of how their lives have changed over time. The title Changing Life, um, it's very meaningful. Uh, I think it encapsulates what we were hoping to achieve uh, in this series. Because if you think about Changing Life, I mean for the people who touch other people, 
uh, basically what they are doing, the good deeds and things like that, which they don't think much about it. I mean, they just do, they just give, you see. So their, their deeds actually would change the people, you know, they are helping. And in more ways than one, changing lives catches up with these extraordinary people and those around them. Extraordinary People had, in its two seasons of 13 episodes each, featured some 50 people, and the decision to narrow down the people to catch up with on changing lives was not an easy one. We decided that this time around we should be focusing on people, very ordinary people, la, whom we don't actually have opportunity to hear from. You know some of these extraordinary people, like, um, you know, five, six years ago when we covered them, like, for example, the cardboard lady, Tan Lai, I think um, her story has touched many, many people and she came, became very famous, but she has uh, passed away, so leaving behind the retarded grandson. So um, we actually follow him la, and see how he's coping right now without the grandmother. La. One or two examples of uh, the choice la, in which we follow, because I guess it's more the interest bit. La. And uh, for some people, like for example, Teresa Su, I mean, she is very extraordinary, yes. I mean, at her age, you know, though she's still doing what, what she has always been doing and with that same kind of energy. But I think by now, a lot of people would have known her. Even for the past few years, she has been covered in some way or another by, you know, by different media. After the break, a look at the people behind Changing Lives. because she couldn't get into the army. We didn't sleep for uh, three days. Just when I was wondering who would turn the grey skies blue You were passing along the way and you brighten up my day The Return of the Extraordinary People, Monday at these times. Only on Channel News Asia. of producers were put together early this year. Their mission, the unenviable task of finding the proverbial needle in the haystack. To begin with, there were no phone numbers, no addresses, just faces and hearsay. We had a lot of problems trying to track down some of these people. I mean, except for the few very famous ones, like Teresa Su, for example, you, you probably would be easy, you know, to find out where she is right now. At times, it was almost like playing detective, with the producers resorting to the telephone directory and making cold calls. Some of the extraordinary people have also since passed away, but they are far from forgotten. The producers managed to track down and catch up with their relatives and the people whose lives they have changed. Among them, acquaintances of the resilient Madam Tan Lai. She received hundreds of donations after her story was aired. Do you think the grandson still remembers her? Oh yes, of course. Still remember. In Chinese, you say, Ama si diao la, eh? Granny passed away already. Uh, he knew. She was such a, such a feisty character, mm. such a strong character. Oh, yes, yes. But she loved the grandson. Each time when we go makan after the church, we brought them for lunch. She always remembered to buy something for the grandson. Madam Tan Lai, who passed away four years ago, was most remembered for her independence and fierce devotion to her grandson. Tracking down her grandson was a little easier because he was still at the same mental institute he had been placed six years ago.
some searches led to sobering ends. When the producers tried to contact David Ng, the writer with motor neuron disease, they found that he had passed away just six months before. I think the challenge for me was that because he had passed on, how was I actually going to do uh, a story about him when he was no longer around? I met his wife, Dorothy, and after talking to her for a while, I realised that how much her life had changed since David had left. She was, although she was still very strong, you could see how much she missed him and how much she was hurting inside. And I felt, I felt actually quite bad because you kind of realise that these are actual people's lives, you know. You, you go there, you actually do a story, you get out of there, that's the end of it. But for these people, their lives are actually carrying on. And for Dorothy, uh, I saw like, what a struggle it was for her to carry on. And so I ended up staying there, talking to her for like three hours. And I just remember at one point she actually said, um, I just miss talking to him, I just want to talk to him again. And she broke down and I was tearing like crazy. And both of us were just sitting in her living room and we were crying. And I think that was, the, I mean, in my job as a producer, this was probably the most emotional story I've ever done. So in that way, it really, really touched me. And yeah, it made me try to see the other side of things. Having come to terms with myself and no longer feeling sorry for myself, I find that the greatest satisfaction I have